and Vinyl community, welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing yet another record store vlog. This time around, I have some sealed trades. Uh, for the past several months, I have acquired a good amount of albums that I kept in the shrink um, that I got for a very, very low price, and I'm willing to uh, let them out of my hands, give them to my local record store, and see what they can give me uh, for them in store credit, and I can leave with some stuff. Um, I got my trusty Pink Floyd Animals tote bag full of albums that I'm going to bring in. And uh, without further ado, let's go in, shall we? So if you're a longtime viewer, you pretty much know what this record store looks like, but they have change it up a little bit. We have little aisleways here and the newer presses take up these uh, these two halves of the store here and then all of the CDs which I believe have been downsized are all right here sectioned off with title cards and whatnot so let's see what we can find in a little bit I'll let you guys know what I can get for what I brought in. Alright, so this visit is actually probably going to be one of the best ones I've done in a while. So Brian, the manager, um, just told me that he's willing to give me $100 uh, for what I brought in. So definitely a large range to choose from. So let's see what they have and see what I can leave with. Black marble vinyl. I wonder what that looks like. Question. Is it possible we can give this a quick spin? Yeah, sure. Like side B or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, just, uh... you sure? Yeah, yeah. Do it up. So the really cool thing is that they actually gave me special privileges to test out this potential purchase that I might make only to find out that it's on rather nice marble pink vinyl. You're probably thinking that I've gone through this section way too many times in past record store vlogs, but you always gotta double check and see what's around. It's actually a rather notable one here. So this is the Flowers and Vegetables uh, bootleg, which is kind of modeled after the look of the Echoes compilation. Uh, focuses on the early Barrett period. Uh, you get some of the sessions from 1965 with Lucy Lee, and I'm a King Bee, uh, BBC stuff of Vegetable Man, Scream Thy Last Scream. And let's take a look at the vinyl on this. So this comes on like a rather nice sort of olive green type of vinyl. I have all this stuff in um, on other bootlegs, but this is a rather nice concise one that focuses on that period.
so I'm not much of a fan of Primus too much, haven't really dug too deep into them, but I do have to say this rainbow splatter pressing of their latest album is absolutely killer looking. Look at that. Guys, I have a problem. This bag is getting really, really heavy, and now I have to make a selection process. <sighs> this is gonna be tough. So Nico is gonna help me out, pick out of all these, which I'm gonna leave with. But the rule is, that's a definite. Okay, so get, yeah. Get so that. that's definite. I have $100 credit. How do we do this? I can't believe it. We, perhaps. I'll have to find two. I had to like think twice about it just to play it safe. <laughs> <laughs> just to double check, be like, make sure my uh, heart's in the right place. See, the, I'm a fan of these guys. Okay. All of these, I would, you know. Okay. I like my Tweedledee Beach Boys, but. All right, so these are Nico's choices. Um, I want you to, you know, go from these three. I'm, I'm an ACDC fan, somewhat. Rush is cool. Can't really say that I've heavily listened to Dream Theater, but the choice is yours. Got it. Um, I would, I don't know, probably that. Probably safe. that? Yeah. Hmm. All right. We'll have to see. Well, at last, another successful record store trip. Till next time. All right, so I just left the record store, just got to my car. I'm gonna show you guys what I managed to snag. Now, I only ended up spending about $20 um, out of pocket, which is not too bad considering how much I spent out of pocket on the last record store vlog that I did. Uh, so, and also for what I managed to get and the prices and everything, I feel like the manager really cut me a good deal. So thank you very much. And also the sheer fact that I was able to get that much back for what I had brought in. So that was a really nice uh, surprise. So first off, this was a number one must have, uh, as you saw earlier. This is Pink Floyd live in New York City, 1977. Now this bootleg um, I have encountered many times uh, in my time collecting and getting into bootlegs. Um, I know the store, I'd had it for a long time. I would see it pop up on various Floyd bootleg sites um, as well as other people that were selling it online. Uh, but if you're a long time viewer of my channel, you know my rules for bootlegs. FM broadcasts, soundboard recordings, or studio outtakes. And this is actually an audience recording. And I feel like I'm sort of breaking my habit and I'm delving deep into another rabbit hole with audience recordings, but I think I'm gonna have much stricter rules in terms of the sound quality. Um, for myself, like, if it comes down to an audience recording, I can't sit down and listen to it like an audio file release because your ears will get fatigued. So if anything, it's kind of good background music. And also if it's good quality, you can pretty much make some sense out of it. Um, now this right here is not the full show. It's essentially the Wish You Were Here album performed in its entirety live during the Animals tour. And you saw it in the clip when I uh, when they let me play it on their, um, on their store setup. But this, comes on really nice marbled pink vinyl with a nice red label, which is really, really nice. The only way you can tell what is side A and side B, um, since there's no indications on the label, is to simply look in the dead wax. You'll see like a fancy written A on one side and a fancy written B on the other. So from what I had heard in the store, um, it sounded decent in my ears for an audience recording. Um, when it comes down to them coming out on vinyl, depending on like if it was remastered in any sense, you know, it could go either way, but this sounded decent in my ears. So I'm actually quite excited to have this as a rather interesting piece of my Floyd collection live in New York City. And up next is um, a, also right off the bat, there's a lot of used stuff here, but it's in very good plus condition. So here is a rather recent pressing of Beach Boys Concert. Now this came out back in 1964. Uh, fun, 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 Little Deuce Coop, Long Tall Texan, In My Room, uh, Papa U Mau Mau, which is a rather good uh, live rendition that they do. Now, the sleeve is rather, rather nice, and it comes with a cool little booklet, which is inside of the sleeve, which is really cool. Just down to the packaging alone, I thought this was really, really nice. And just to show you the vinyl real quick, nice 180 gram vinyl press, 
amazing condition for the vinyl. Comes on the uh, the color band um, capital label, which was what the original was like back in the day when this first came out. Um, I don't think I have any live Beach Boy stuff, so this is actually a first. It's rumored that they uh, overdubbed some bits um, in the studio to kind of make it more polished sounding since it can kind of get drowned out with the screams and whatnot from the audience, but uh, this will be a fun listen indeed. Beach Boys concert. And then we have uh, some more obscure Hendrix uh, releases. Uh, this one in particular is called Burning Desire. Uh, now this came out, I believe, as part of Record Store Day 2015. Um, and it is also numbered, as you can see there. I have copy number 2,271. Um, and this is on the Dagger Records imprint that his estate looks after. So Dagger Records kind of goes for like the major, major diehard fans that want to get pretty much everything, whether it's like bootleg quality and other outtakes that might not appeal to the mass public. Uh, but on this, we have uh, some various recordings of Isabella, uh, Cherokee Mist, um, Cher Cherokee Mist, Astro Man, um, Villanova Junction Blues, Low Time Blues, um, just all kinds of rather nice uh, studio outtakes. I'll show you guys the artwork. Very good plus, con uh, plus condition for about 20 bucks. So for a record store day release and considering the condition, it's amazing bang for the buck. You get liner notes and photos. And like all Hendrix releases, polylined QRP sleeves, nice, um, quality vinyl just take it out real quick and show you master by ryan k smith rather nice labels amazing stuff so i gotta say i mean i feel like as time is going on i'm getting much deeper and deeper into the hendrix stuff uh because i've gotten all the box sets recently i'm getting the posthumous releases which came out in the 70s and whatnot so um the hendrix collection is slowly being enriched with all this all this great stuff so burning desire and then, let's see, what else do we have? We have two more records. So this is actually a record that I had a variation of for some time, and I actually traded it into the record store during my last um, record store vlog. And I just managed to snag a complete version of the show, because what I had, like there was a couple songs taken out, and, um, and surprisingly enough, um, I looked online, this is actually going for a rather high value, so I wanted to get it um, at the perfect price point. So this is Rush ABC 1974. Uh, this is a um, broadcast recording from Cleveland back in August 1974. Now this is notable for um, including two songs. There's Fancy Dancer and um, what's the other one called? Garden Road. No, those two songs have never been recorded in the studio, only performed live. And uh, this is pretty much the only place that you can really find those tracks anywhere. Um, and also, it's really cool with Garden Road. They played like a small bit of it um, after Working Man on their last tour, which was the R40 tour. So it was cool that they added a little nod to this. Um, I believe, from what I can see, because it's still in the, the bag, the shrink is still on it, but they kind of slid it across the opening. Uh, this is just a really cool release to have, a really cool uh, Rush show to have in my collection, and it's just also nice to have a complete version of the show as well, so I'm very happy to have this. And last but not least is an album that I'm kind of finding hard to get here in the U.S. Um, it's available everywhere else in the world, but then again, you have to pay import prices and convert it to U.S. dollars and shipping costs. It gets crazy, uh, but there was a copy there, and bit of a steep price on it but honestly it's a gap in my dream theater collection and also i do have a soft spot for this album as well so this is falling into infinity which came out back in 1997 <clears throat> excuse me as you can see it's the uh, music on vinyl pressing there um this in a way is sort of the black sheep of the dream theater catalog because um the label was really pushing them to be more commercial and producer Kevin Shirley just completely dissected all the songs that they had worked up for this album. If you have the official bootleg of the demos, you can hear those songs in their true state. Uh, but even with that said, considering the nature of this album, I have a lot of fondness for it. Um, I remember I was listening to Dream Theater heavily um, ever since like I was in sixth grade, I wanna say. And I remember summer of 2009, uh, my family and I, we would go to the beach all the time. And uh, this was one of the albums that I would listen to all the time while on my way to the 
to the Jersey Shore. So like on this album, Peruvian Skies is great. Hollow Years is one of the band's finest mellower moments. Um, Lines in the Sand is like a traditional dream theater epic. Just Let Me Breathe this good. One of my personal favorites is Anna Lee. It's just this great piano-driven song. It's absolutely sensational, and I am so, so happy that this is finally in my collection. So there you go. That is what I picked up today on my latest record store vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.